chest and shoulders at the gym done. But now straight back out the door for a 45 minute run interval session before back home for food. Today's video is all about Monday rest day. Today though is not a Monday. I have got to get a chair in here. Okay, so today is Wednesday, but this video is all about Monday's rest day. It's also a little bit about new stuff day, but more on that in a second. When I used to work out years ago, I always had Monday as the first train day of the week. Monday, attack the week as you mean to go on, motivation running at maximum. Tuesday, similar. Wednesday, mm, maybe lacking a little bit of motivation. Thursday, Friday, I'm in trouble. I then go into the weekend and I'm done. And that is a very bad time to be done. The weekend is barbecue time. It's snacks in front of a movie time. It's junk food time. It's a very, very bad time to go in lacking motivation. If you go into a weekend bad, you're coming out of it bad. And then I discovered Monday rest day and it has completely transformed my training. The three things that it really helps with most is planning, preparation, and solving that weekend problem. So let's go through these one at a time. Planning. Planning always starts on a Monday morning at 6 a.m. in here. Every single Monday, first thing, planning for the week. There's no time pressure. I've got no training on a Monday. I've got no client meetings on a Monday. All I need to do is get ready for the rest of the week. And it starts every time by opening up Trainer Road calendar and my Outlook calendar. So my Trainer Road calendar is giving me my Ironman sessions for the week. The running, the swimming, the biking. It knows where my Ironman event is taking place and it has calculated what I need to do to get there. I've also manually added in three gym sessions a week that go on top of that. And that is all in the diary. All I need to do is do what it tells me to get done. And then my Outlook diary has everything else. So of course it's got work stuff in there, but also social stuff, family stuff. I'm looking at it now for this week. I've got DIY tasks in there. I've got some uh, photographs need printing out. My iMac screen has gone wonky, I need to fix that. One of my kids has emailed himself into my diary because he wants to spend some time seeing if he is too small for his kayak. And if he is, can he sell it? I'm suspicious he just wants money. So we're gonna spend half hour finding out. The bottom line is if it needs doing and it takes time, it goes into the diary. And importantly, at this early stage on a Monday, nothing is more important than something else. It all needs doing, it all goes into the diary. Something I hear a lot is people say, oh, I can't find time to train and look after myself because I need to spend time with the kids. At the end of the day, if you need to spend time with your kids, then great, stick it in your diary and get it done, spend some quality time with them. If you need to spend lots of that time with them, fine, do that. And the little bit of time you've got left, look at it, find where it is and stick yourself into that. To just shove aside looking after yourself without really questioning if that's the only option available to you just seems so short-sighted. Your kids don't benefit from having a parent that isn't looking after themselves. What sort of inspiration is that? The point is not screw your family, screw your job, just work out all day long. The point is regard all those things as being of equal importance on day one when you're planning your week. If you just assume, oh, there can't be any time for me because I'm a family man, well, no, there won't be. If you'd looked for it, if you'd planned for it, it would have been there. But your assumption was it wasn't, and therefore by the end of the week, you look back and think, oh, I was right, it just didn't exist. Yeah, it did. You just didn't spot it, and therefore it got swallowed up by just wasting your time on Netflix and surfing the web and watching junk on television. It is there if you look for it. Okay, back to the diaries. So the first thing I do is I look for clashes. So for example, I can see that next week I've got a four hour bike ride on the Saturday, but I know I also have a 10K trail run that day. I've also got a 10K road run on the Sunday. So not only is the long base run of two and a half hours gonna be unlikely to take place, doing the four hour bike ride the day before might not be too conducive to that going well either. It might be a case of taking some things out. It might be a case of just reducing the time spent on them. It may be a case of making no changes at all. If it's just a 10K run and it's quite an easy weekend, it might slot in alongside the other activities. 
but a four hour bike ride and a two and a half hour run the next day isn't something that I can just assume will have no impact on my racing at the same time. Once I'm happy that there's nothing else needs to be moved around, I will then fix in stone my gym sessions and my swim sessions. They go across into my Outlook diary because they have to be booked with the sports center because under the coronavirus rules, you can't just turn up at a sports center because everybody will drop down dead. So they need to get booked in. So that happens next. I then plan the running, the cycling, the stuff I can do from home around whatever else is going on in my Outlook diary. So it's typically fitting it around client meetings and stuff I have to get done for work. And once I'm done with that, I'll stick in three sauna sessions a week. I'll also try and find some time at the weekend to do a sort of an active resting activity. So maybe a bit of kayaking, a bit of mountain biking with Jenna, something that we can go and do together and is pretty low intensity stuff that doesn't impact my training and then I'm good to go. Unless an emergency crops up, something completely unexpected, I don't need to give my training another moment's thought. If I had to rely on motivation, come Friday morning when I have to get up and go to the swimming pool, I wouldn't go. The reason I get up and go to the swimming pool on a Friday is because it's in my diary, it just happens. I don't need any more motivation to do it than I need motivation to go on a client meeting that's in my diary. I'm just going. Motivation unrequired. I should also add that if you're going to ignore motivation as a driving force and rely only on planning, it's only half the battle because the other half of it is making things incredibly straightforward for yourself. Remove all hurdles. That swim on a Friday morning, when I grab my swim bag, it's ready. I don't prepare it on the Friday morning. It's done on Thursday night. I literally pick it up and walk out the door. I don't need to think, where's my goggles, where's my trunks, where's my towel, no hurdles. So, as you can see, Monday, although it's a rest day, is not a do nothing day. If the actual training itself is shooting the arrow, this is drawing back the bow. And the next part of that is preparation. Preparation back in the garage, although I'm gonna take this chair. That is better. Okay, preparation typically covers three things on a Monday. My kit, my food, and repairing my body. And all three of them tie in very closely with what I was saying about making things as straightforward for yourself as possible. So first of all, kit. Here is what I don't want. I don't wanna come in here to go for a cycle ride and discover as I'm going out the door that my light batteries are flat, that my Garmin has got no juice. Grab my trainers off the rack and find out they're still wet from when I last ran in the rain. In summary, is the kit that I need for the week ready to go and if it's not, what do I need to do to fix that? I wanna know that I can grab what I need and it will be ready to go. It will be dry, it will be clean, it will be charged up. And it solves all problems that would otherwise occur. For example, if it's pouring with rain, but I know that I can just go back there and grab my waterproof jacket and it will be bone dry, stick it on, I'm out the door, it doesn't matter that it's raining. But equally, in contrast, if I come in here and I can't find my sunglasses, but the weather outside is beautiful, I'm now pissed off before I even start that activity. So just making sure that my gear is all good and ready to go when I want it, takes away those hurdles that would otherwise get in the way. and might be enough to make me think, do you know what, can I even be bothered to go? If I need to put my watch on charge before I'm out the door, I'll run tomorrow. And it also extends from kit into things I might need to obtain or replace. This is a good example this week actually because for the road bike I've just gone from 25 to 28 mil tires trying to make it a slightly more comfortable ride. So I've had to order some new rubber for the bike. I've also got this race coming up on Saturday which is a 20 mile trail run across the Brecon Beacons with Nixon and there was a couple of items of kit that I needed for it that I didn't have. So I've ordered those and they are quite cool. So I'll show you those in a minute. And it extends to my food as well, because here's something that I really don't want to have happen. I don't want to get to late in the week, tired, still got lots of training to do though, feeling hungry, 9.30 at night, go to the fridge for a snack while I'm watching TV and none of my clean snacks are there. I'm out of Greek yogurt, I'm out of blueberries. There's no rice cakes, peanut butter's gone because I will find something to eat and it won't be pretty. I've heard my kids say to me, Dad, have you seen my chocolate bar? Far too many times. And as only so often you can blame the dog. So Monday, I just check that I've got everything that I might want during the week. I've even got my own drawer in the fridge where I keep the things that I use on a regular basis and always want to have a supply of. My whey protein, my casein protein, cocoa nibs, oats, just clean stuff. What is getting low, what needs topping up? 
and it also extends to my endurance training fuel as well. So for example, I noticed this weekend that I've got plenty of gels left, but I'm out of mountain fuel energy bars. I'm going to need a couple for Saturday's race, so Monday I place an order, they'll be here tomorrow, and my fuel drawer gets restocked as well. And lastly, how am I doing physically after the previous week's training? I use the sauna regularly, I use a massage gun regularly, in fact I've done whole videos about how I keep myself kind of ticking over. But is there anything that I need in addition? For example, this weekend just gone, I ran my Supathlon, the paddleboard run duathlon thing, in Vibram Five Fingers. If you've ever worn barefoot trainers, you'll know that initially when you transition to them, it puts a bit of a load on the calf muscle. It's also the case that if you haven't worn them for a while and then you jump into them and race in them flat out, it hammers your calves. I struggled to walk downstairs on Monday. So this week, in addition to what I would normally do anyway, I've also allocated some extra time in my diary to do some foam rolling on my calves, get the power dot on them, and basically put a bit more focus on in preparation for Saturday. So there you go. Monday is literally my most important training day of the week, and I don't do any training on it. It is the foundation on which every other day is built. Without it, half of what I need to get done wouldn't get done, my gear wouldn't be ready, it would demotivate me, the week would be useless. Whether it's training, family, work, if it's important, it goes into the diary. And if you're thinking, I'm not so sure, I don't do any planning, even though there are things I'd like to get done but don't find time for, but when I get to the end of the week, I've had no free time so it would have been pointless anyway, I advise you to check again because I can assure you life will happily fill your diary if you don't. And occasionally, it will fill it with things that are important or emergencies or beneficial, and that's okay. But more often than not, it won't. Life is actually pretty shit at planning. It will allocate you time to scroll once more through Facebook, or sit down and just see what's on TV, or it will set aside two hours to go through every cupboard in your kitchen and see if you can find the kids' chocolate. Do not let life plan your diary. Plan your own diary. Okay, so that is why Mondays are a cool day for me. Almost as cool as new stuff arriving day. Ultra Lone Peak 4s. I got these about a year ago, stuck them on and immediately went off and ran a 50k Ultra in them and they were amazing. Comfortable, didn't rub anywhere, gripped, just perfect. And I've worn them an awful lot ever since. In fact, I've worn them probably a bit too much and they have now got almost no grip left. The other problem with them, which has become increasingly an issue, is that even for an Ultra, they have a really wide toe box. Ultra shoes traditionally have a lot of space in the front so your feet can move around. The Lone Peak 4s have probably a bit more than most though. And one thing I notice with them, especially when they get wet, is my foot has so much room to move around that off-road, it has the potential to roll within the shoe not great for my ankles, stability and confidence. So they are being retired. Actually, my retired trainers go to my dad, who at 83 probably has more ultra trainers than anybody, does his gardening in them. So they're off to their vegetable patch, ultra Lone Peak 4.5s. And they're green. They're really green. I've been told that they are slightly narrower and as a fresh pair have a ton of grip. So I'm hoping the two issues I have with the old ones are completely solved. They're gonna be used this Saturday going across Brecon Beacons. So this right now is nothing more than a, hey, look at my cool shoes. This is not a proper review. I am hoping they are going to be as successful as those ones were last year on the ultramarathon. At worst, if I get lost out there, I can lie on my back and wave my green shoes in the air and the air ambulance will find me very easily. So that's the new shoes for Saturday, but also this is my Solomon race vest 5 litre version and if you don't need to carry more than 5 litres, it is absolutely perfect. I've used it for up to uh, ultramarathon. In fact, the ultramarathon that I wore the old trainers in, I wore this as well and it was great. Water storage. Uh, nutrition, GoPros, uh, a spare top, it all fits in there absolutely fine, no issues at all. But for the race on Saturday, they have supplied a kit list that is required, you can't race without that kit, and it is not going to fit in this. So, I have got the 12 litre version. 
The kit list includes things like a foil blanket, it includes a waterproof top, waterproof trousers, spare thermal layer, your phone, obviously I'll be taking my cameras, nutrition, hydration, Nixon's running with me so I need stuff for the dog, doggy treats, uh, I guess he can share my foil blanket. The elastic band adjustment on the Solomon vest means that it fits just about any body size or body shape. It's incredibly comfortable to wear. It's got zip pockets on both sides. It's got a much bigger storage space in the back, a big zipped compartment that the 5 litre version doesn't have. So foil blanket, waterproofs, that's all gonna go in there absolutely fine. Again, this is not much more than, hey look, new kit, but I will be using it on Saturday and reporting back accordingly. The hope is that with that and my incredible Hulk looking feet, me and Nixon will storm across the Brecon Beacons and have a very good race indeed. And that is it. Next video will be after Saturday's Brecon Beacons race with me and Nixon, assuming we both make it out of there in one piece. I'll tell you how I did, how he did, how the trainers did, how the vest did. Uh, hopefully it will be informative and entertaining. And if you find it so, please like and subscribe. That is great for me. And also comment because my kids cannot believe that anyone finds what I do remotely interesting. So when people comment, I can rub it in their faces and show them that they don't know what they're talking about. Book on parenting coming soon.